Hi everyone, Heather here with astrologywithheather.com and I am back with another special video. And today I have with me once again, the one and only Raphael from Radiant Reality Tarot. Hi Raphael. Hi Heather. Thank you so much for being here and thank you for doing this series with me. Um, we're diving deep into the astrology and tarot, covering the entire major arcana in the tarot deck. So definitely check out some of the previous videos. I'll post the playlist at the end of this video so you can see that. And definitely subscribe to Raphael's channel because we're going to be posting videos alternating between my channel and his. And so the next video will be on his channel and you're going to want to check that out. Um, but today we're talking about the death card, which is like the most ominous card in the tarot deck. And it's also it happens to be a Scorpio association, which is like the most ominous, um, maybe misunderstood energy in the Zodiac as well. So this should be an interesting one. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, as I always say, I'm learning so much myself about the astrology uh, through this project. So it's, yeah, I'm just chuffed to be here, really. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And I mean, I same here. Like I'm learning about the tarot. Sometimes I forget things, but <laughs> I'm still learning. <laughs> Same. And I was like, when I think about the astrology, I'm like, it's a much bigger system. There's so many more moving parts to it. So I kind of skip back to tarot because it's what I know. I feel the same way though. Like tarot, it, there's so many different combinations and different things that can come up and ways to interpret it. It's, yeah, it's pretty intense. <laughs> yeah. All right. So speaking of intense, Boom, we have the death card. So when we see this, obviously, in a tower reading, as a reader, as somebody that's getting a reading, this is one of those ones, right, that you can almost visibly see people kind of clam up and they're like, oh gosh, what's coming up? Yeah. So the death card... <clears throat> in the tarot literally represents endings, completions. Um, I don't really say culminations because a culmination to me always suggests like a birth, mm -hmm. whereas a completion is where something ends. And when we think about death, this is the final secret for all of us, right? That at some point, uh, you know, not to get too morbid, but <laughs> we're in the realm, so we might as well go there. This is where something comes to a completion. This is where something comes to an end, and we see that final decision. Um, and when I say final decision, it, I wouldn't say this is kind of like the, like, let's say, justice. Like, when I say final decision, this is like the last thing. And interestingly enough, when you think about natural law, there is one absolute that all things eventually will have their time and they will come to pass, mm -hmm. um, which I find really interesting because the death card is number 13 in the tarot deck. And it's when you look at that from a numerological perspective, that suggests uh, the number four. And the number four is the emperor. Mm -hmm. And uh, Heather, I'm pretty sure you can remember what... <laughs> Astrological association to this card? Yeah, that's Aries, and they're both like Mars ruled signs, so that's interesting. Absolutely, absolutely. So, this card represents endings, completions. It also represents those spaces where we have to let something go, where something has gone as far as it will be able to go, or in many ways as well. This is where something, um, it's kind of like one of those moments where you know something that you've had up until this moment has taken you to this point, but mm -hmm. it will take you no further. It's almost like that moment where you can't go in for any further forward uh, with it. So if you were to talk about this in that respect, um, and also it represents the desires that are left once everything else is stripped away. Once all of our status and, you know, all of that comes away, we're left with just the primal aspects of who we are and what our desires are. So if I was talking about that, would that kind of tie in with the whole Scorpio energy? Oh, yeah. I mean, Scorpio, it's like the truth and like your deepest desires and nothing else. And that's a very Pluto energy as well. And I kind of have a question about this because in traditional astrology, um, Saturn rules death, right? But then in modern Western astrology, it's been associated more with Scorpio and especially with the planet Pluto. But when you're talking about these things, they're a little bit different. So Saturn is like a hard end to something and a need to clear something out, whereas Pluto more has to do with decomposition 
decomposition and regeneration. So it's kind of like an ending to clear out the excess in order to create something new or to create the, the fertile soil for something new. So a Pluto ruled thing or a Scorpio thing would be literally, um, you know, excretion, right? So you talk about like the colon and that type of thing. So any bodily function that excretes or anything where you're getting rid of something and also this process of like decomposition, like compost. So compost would be ruled by Pluto and by Scorpio because um, it's this process of decomposing and like it's like the like dead plant matter and it's being broken down to its like rawest form. So it's just basic nutrients in order mm. to create something new. Would that have to, would that be more associated with the death card as opposed to like a hard ending to something like, like a Saturn? Yeah, it's really interesting you mentioned that because it can literally be both. And it's interesting that you mentioned this. I don't know if you can see in the back of the card there, mm -hmm. there is two pillars and there's a light shining through. That is the, that's the part of this card that actually suggests the energy of transformation or something moving beyond or something um, coming out of the death. And it's really interesting because one of the things about this card that I often say to people is when the death card shows up for you, you're being almost presented with a choice. You can let this go through its natural cycle where it's supposed to come to an end. And that's kind of like the decision energy that I talked about, mm -hmm. because what it's effectively doing is, like you mentioned, you know, it's clearing the decks for you so that something else can come through. And I know that... Um, the scorpionic sort of energy has that phoenix rising to the part to it yeah uh, you know that's the whole energy behind death is that it's it's not this awful kind of scary thing um and one of the really really interesting things about that is if you look really close on the card it's not a very clear card i, I wish i had the bright deck but mm. there's a child right in the forefront there who is looking at death and offering a flower there's the maiden who's turning away and then there's the, the Pope kind of figure who's just kind of stood there. And what that means is <clears throat> the child approaches this thing, uh, represents the soul because the soul knows, OK, yes, my physical shell is going or this thing is coming to an end. Mm -hmm. The ego, the maiden, will fight against that because it's like, oh, it's coming to an end. Something's changing. Not sure I can deal with that. And then the Pope, because he has his... Um, religious understanding to rely on knows okay so this door is closing but there will be another one that opens yeah and that aspect of like the soul being a part of it that's kind of like the essence you know <laughs> so it's like breaking it down to like literally its core and that's it that's very much a Scorpio thing yeah absolutely and you know it really is that as well right when we're all stripped down to you know, when you take away our money and our status and our cars and everything, like what's left is yeah. just the core of who you are, like the, the depths of who you are. So um, the death card as well uh, also has links to the knights in the tarot. So if you mm -hmm. see the, yeah. the horse there, that's that energy. And I find that really interesting as well, because this is a Mars ruled sign in ancient astrology, right? Mm -hmm. Which has that sort of energetic, fiery kind of energy. And the knights in tarot have that same quality. They're all about movement or what is next, what is in front rather than what's behind. Well, and it's interesting too, because that like little knight guy on the horse, he's like marching forward. Like, is this kind of like, I'm ready? Like, I'm ready for my yeah. death. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so when we talk about Scorpio and death, where does that, where does it come in? So like I mentioned before, Scorpio is about breaking things down to like kind of the core essence. So it's a very similar thing. It's kind of like, it's like this, you're breaking it down to like, literally all you have left is your soul or that spark and that's it. Right. And then from there you could create anything. So that's kind of that energy of Scorpio, it's the death and rebirth, the death and transformation energy. Um, and Scorpio in general is a sign that really is all about, first off, it has to be something very truthful, very meaningful, very deep for Scorpio. Scorpio doesn't deal with like excess and like, you know, niceties and things like that. It's about getting down to the core of something and focusing on that. It's a very like laser focused energy. 
Um, and so Scorpio, like you mentioned before, that, that energy of desire, right? Scorpio brings you down to your ba basic, like most pure, like desires in this lifetime. So what you need, want, and desire on a core level. And that could be like very basal things like, you know, I'm, you know, I desire food, water, sex, like that kind of thing, right? <laughs> and that, that's very Scorpio. All the basics. <laughs> yeah. But it could also be like, what does your soul want on like the deepest level and how can you create that? So you have to strip away all of the material. So Scorpio is very, not very attached to the material realm. It'll throw away whatever it needs to throw away physically, but it's attached to that desire and it's attached to its emotions too. And like it can have an emotional and a psychological attachment to things. And that's very hard to go to clear away. So kind of the physical realm is very easy to kind of let go of for Scorpio. And it's all about that. It's all about purging anything physical that's like no, it getting in the way. Right. But mm -hmm. that core essence and that psychological and emotional, um, level, that's where, that's where that fixed energy of Scorpio comes in. Yeah. Wow. That's really interesting. Cause I always kind of see like with the signs, um, cause obviously each element has three signs to it right mm -hmm. and I always kind of see them as um different aspects of that element so mm -hmm. I kind of see Scorpio as like ice because it's fixed water mm -hmm. you know so it has that kind of um uh, that constancy about it yeah really interesting so or ice or like a like a raging river or a waterfall where it's like just you can't divert it it's just like yeah <laughs> yeah but yeah I've heard both and I think both are correct in in their own ways they're different like variations of that Scorpio energy that can be played out yeah yeah that makes total sense and also it's interesting because when you were talking about that when you talk about it like that I can totally see where the intense kind of label comes from mm -hmm. because there's that singular almost sort of focus um and I kind of feel like that's like with the death card as well there's no way around it when the death yeah. so as a really good example um if you pull cards and you're like right I need to know should I do this or if like a client will say to me you know I need to know like should I do this or should I not do this if I pull this card Usually I pull like three to four cards for a single question. But if I pull this card as the first card, it's an absolute no. Mm -hmm. It's a hard no. That's the tarot's way of saying, no, this is this is it. You've gone as far as you can go with this thing. And that's where it ends. Um, which I find, you, you know, I mean, it makes total sense in a, in a lot of ways because it's, mm -hmm. you know, like this is where it ends. So I have to ask as well with Scorpio, when they talk about the um, the taboo, where does that come from? Well, because Scorpio wants to know the truth, right? And they're not afraid. Scorpio has that association with fear also. Um, also, that's a Saturn thing too. There's a lot of traditional associations for Saturn that somehow got delivered to Pluto and Scorpio, but they work. Um, but um, I guess like the taboo energy, Scorpio has always ruled the occult. It's ruled like witchcraft. It's ruled black magic and all forms of magic. It's ruled things that have been traditionally um, demonized and mm -hmm. thought of as being taboo. It rules intimacy, but, you know, people say Scorpio rules sex. And I don't know that that's, I mean, it's partially true. It rules the sex organs, um, but it's more like, um, it's a little bit different. <laughs> So sex in terms of like romance and that type of thing, like that's more like a fifth house energy specifically. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas like sex for just like basal, like procreation, like sex for the most basic necessities, like reproducing, that's more like a Scorpio energy. Um, but um, what was I asked? What question was I answering about this? <laughs> <laughs> I wanted like to know about Scorpio and the taboo. And yeah, so things like that. Yeah, sense. things like that that are super taboo because Scorpio is death, but it's also rebirth, right? It's the birthing process. It's like actually giving birth to something is a very Scorpio energy because it involves those um, organs of reproduction where, yes, things can go in, but things can come out as well, like at least on the female end um, and the male end too, I guess. Yeah. So <laughs> it's this energy. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> oh, but Scorpio rules areas where, like, it rules um, processes where things are expelled, but you can't put them back in, if that makes sense. So a baby comes out, you can't stuff it back in. You know, when you're going yeah, to the definitely. bathroom that comes out, it can't go back in. Like, those are all Scorpio ruled things. It's like, you're there, and that's what's just going to happen. Like, you can't take it back. You're You're on that um, trajectory. And also like it can be endings, right? You've let it go. It's out of your body. So it's no longer there anymore. Um, so I guess things that are taboo, it literally rules everything that's taboo. Like you don't talk about people like, um, YouTube about going to the bathroom except right now. Um, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Sex organs, you know, occult magic, witchcraft, all those things. Yeah. Um, amazing. <laughs> that's interesting as well. Cause um, when you talk about magic and the occult and stuff, if you were to see the high priestess coupled with the death card, that's usually um, everyone that's a medium that sat at my table, whether in person or over the airways. When I see these cards, I say to them, you have mediumistic tendencies or you're a medium. And they're like, yes, how do you right?" And high priestess, all of that sort of spiritual psychic energy mm -hmm. coupled with the death card makes total sense love that um the final thing that i have to mention about this is what i said earlier is about the link between these two um and it is like a numerological link because you see 13 and 4 um so they're kind of linked in that way i just found it really interesting that in ancient astrology they're both ruled by mars um yeah. how does mars operate in scorpio is it very different or well, one of the things that you were talking about was, and that that's what came up for me was the traditional rulership with Mars. When you talked about this was like, it's a hard no when this comes up in the tarot, right? And Mars and Saturn are the only planets in astrology that have the capability of saying no to something. So mm -hmm. Mars, if you, in certain contexts, you'd really have to look at the whole chart, but especially if you're somebody who's born at night. All right, sorry, during the day, Mars would have the ability to say no to things in a way that no other planet would. If you're born at night, Saturn would have the ability to say no to things like no other planet would. Um, so it can be literally a hard no with that Mars energy, um, especially in certain situations in certain contexts. So that I actually thought was really interesting. Um, but the link between Mars in Scorpio and Mars in Aries and Mars just in general, like Ma Mars in Scorpio or Scorpio in general is an energy where you are laser focused on something. So you are fixed on whatever it is that you deeply desire and you want to create and you're going to do it no matter what. It's a psychic type of focus. It's like an internal, like psychological focus as opposed to Mars and Aries, which is like a physical, like I'm going to do this physically and push my way into it no matter what blockages come my way. Um, you know, Scorpio is a little different. They use their mental energy. They use their intuition. They use this psychic energy. And Scorpio, more than any other sign, has the ability to draw things in like a magnet. Like they put it out there and it just comes right back to them. Um, that's a very Scorpio energy and a Pluto energy too. Like if you have a strong Pluto, you're going to draw things in like a magnet that you want and repel away anything that's not that. And you can't lie to yourself about it either. It's like, it's like whatever you deeply want, that's what you're going to be creating and drawing in or pushing away. Even if you tell yourself you want something different, it just doesn't work that way. Um, and that's especially true for strong Pluto placements. And I know this because I have that. And so I can't, <laughs> I can't, I can't choose. I, it's like, I, yeah, I get to draw in what I want, but I don't get to necessarily choose that, if that makes sense. It's like, it's like a thing that's like more visceral and it's just ingrained. So, um, so yeah, that's kind of the Mars association. Like, you can, Scorpio can create whatever they want to create. You know, they're super powerful manifestors and it's more on a psychic level though. Mm. Wow. That last bit there is just mind blowing about the magnetism and stuff. Yeah, it makes total sense. Um, my dad is a trip Scorpio, sun, mm. moon and ascendant. So, and it's just funny seeing like the way that he is, like when you describe it like that, that's him <laughs> to a T. So he's very focused. Like when he's focused, just get out of the way it's better oh yeah <laughs> they won't even notice you anyway if you're like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there, literally there yeah <laughs> uh, yeah all right well great i covered everything i think this one's been really awesome actually we really got into a lot of the the deeper stuff of it especially on an astrological level there's so much that you know it's crazy yeah, I mean, with the tarot as well, like I learned a lot of stuff about the death card that <laughs> I 
I hadn't thought about or, or learned about previously. So that's super interesting. And um, yeah, thank you so much for coming on the, the my channel and doing this video and continuing with this series. And next time, you guys, it'll be on Raphael's channel. So again, make sure that you subscribe to his channel. And that's going to be the temperance card, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we'll do temperance next time. And so we'll see you guys next time. Thank you again. Bye, everyone.